these are my demonstrators that I take to shows. On the left is the 1A2 key slash hybrid PBX demonstrator. On the right is my various ringers demonstrator. These will be at the Orlando Castleberry Antique Telephone Show this month, which today is January 1st of 23. We'll give you a little demonstration of how these work shortly. I'm giving you a little bit of a close-up view of the 1A2 slash PBX demonstrator. On the left of the backboard is a Western Electric 551C KSU 1A2 key which has four line capability as you can see there are four line cards one for each line for a total of four below the four line cards you will see the ring generator that will provide ringing for the phones and that's the 551 on the left on the top right is a Panasonic KXTD 308 which is a digital analog hybrid key slash PBX KSU capability of three CO lines and with the optional station expander module which I have in this KSU I have eight digital ports and eight analog ports I'm using this Panasonic as a little central office to provide dial tone for the four CO trunks on the KSU on the key system 1A2 key for the shoe box 551 KSU there so extensions 21 through 24 off the Panasonic are feeding each line card on the 551 on the left which appear on all the phones that I have plugged in Below the Panasonic KSU, I have a Valcom V Victor, or Valcom, V for Valcom, 119RT as in rotary tone. That is a dial intercom unit. It has up to 29 buzzing signaling ports. So you can have up to 29 extensions that have a buzzer. And those are hooked up through the fifth line position of the six button key sets each six button key set has a buzzer uh, and you can call and buzz each of the phones with that intercom unit uh, below the Valcom unit on the right on the lower right is a 55A controller which is used for the 3A speakerphone which I have set up with a 2565 set which I'll show you momentarily and now we're going to show you how this thing works before I give you a demonstration of how this works, I have four stations hooked up to the 551 KSU. We'll start with the set on the left. That's a Western Electric 502, which is a single line phone, a 500 set basically, with a lead control. A lead control is necessary to signal the system to let the other users know that line is in use when going off hook on that phone that phone is currently hooked up to line four so when going off hook it will illuminate line four positions on the six button sets so that's a 502 Western Electric phone on the left far left the next set over to the right of it is a 565 six button key set with a buzzer for intercom and that phone is I believe intercom number 20 or excuse me intercom number one which I'll show you how that works when we call it on the intercom part it has four lines plus intercom on the fifth line uh, lines one through four are 21 22 23 and 24 respectively as they are on the other key sets multi-line sets so 
That's a 565, the second phone to the, from the left. The third one from the right of that one is a 454 Western Electric. It's a four button key set and it has hold and three lines. So the first three lines of the 1A2 are going to appear on that phone. Since that's a four button set and it only can have three lines, there is no fourth line on it and there is a no fifth line for intercom. Even though that phone does have a buzzer in it, I do not have it wired for intercom since it's a three button set. Uh, I would have to sacrifice the third button from CO3 to make it an intercom, but I didn't wire up the system that way. It's a squared system, so all the phones are having the same line appearances regardless of the type of phone you have plugged in. So they're all squared at lines 1 through 4. Our CO line 5 is intercom. So that's a 444, our third phone from the left. and. The next phone over from that is a 2565 six button key set with 3A speakerphone hooked up to it. The 3A speakerphone is controlled by the controller. The 55A controller is sitting behind the 444 set. It's the gray box on the lower right of the display. That controller fun allows the, which is the speakerphone itself and allows the speakerphone to function. All electronics that make the speakerphone work are in the 55A controller. Um, the, two, uh, the two apparatuses next to the, to the 2565 set um, are, is this 3A speakerphone. On the left side of the phone is the microphone or transmitter. It also has a volume control to control the volume of the speaker to the right of the phone. The right of the phone it has the uh, the right side of the phone has a speaker box, and all that's in there is a speaker. It's a two conductor wire and a speaker. Again, back to the transmitting controller on the left side of the 2565 set that has an on and off switch on the top left, so, uh, top left of the uh, controller. Um, I will show you how that works momentarily. Um, you have an off button and an on button when you turn it on you press it on it lights up speakerphone goes off hook on whatever line is depressed on the six button set including intercom if you're using it for that um, if you hold the on button down while on a conversation holding the on button in the down position with your finger is also mute it will mute the transmitter so if you're in a conference call or you're in a conference room with various people and on the, you don't want the other party to hear what's going on temporarily you just reach over and hold the button down while it's on and that will mute the transmitter without disconnecting the line so we're gonna get ready to show you how this thing works okay we're gonna get ready to show you how this system functions I am actually going to start off with the phone on the left, which is the 502 West Electric. That is, a, again, a 500 set with a lead control. A lead control allows the functionality of the 1A2 key system. So when you go off hook, it will light up line 4. I have that phone wired to line 4 of the KSU. So when I go off hook on it, it's going to light up the fourth line position on the phone next to it. As you see, line four is lit up on this phone here. I'm going to hang up and it will extinguish. And it's in idle now. That phone is extension 24, which is the fourth line position on the key system. So if I go over to this phone and press one of the other lines, 20, line 1, 2, or 3, which is 21, 22, or 23, and I dial 24, it will ring that phone. Just to give you a heads up, the ringers on the multi-line sets are common audible ringers, which means that when any of these four lines ring, the ringers in all the multi-line sets are going to ring simultaneously including this one even though it doesn't have the fourth line position I again this system is wired as a square system so all the phones are wired for four lines 
plus fifth line dial intercom and common audible so the ringers are all common on these phones except for this one this is obviously a single line this is only going to ring on line four these since the ringer on this phone is wired directly to the line it's not wired to the common audible of the system but these multi-line phones the five, the four, the 565, the 444, and the one over there, which is the uh, 2565, they're wired for common audible, so they're all going to ring simultaneously, regardless of the phone that's ring, the line that's ringing. So I'm going to go ahead and call this phone from this one. Well, you know what? I can use this one. Don't matter since it's a three-line phone. I'm going to go on line three, which is extension 23. Go off hook. As you see, they light up. I'm going to dial 24, and they're all going to ring, including the single line on the left there. See line four, it's flashing here. That's ringing directly from the Panasonic, not from the key system, because it's, and I'm going to answer it. And as you see, stops ringing, line is seized, and I'm off hook, and line four is also lit up on the six button set. I'm going to hang up, and that line four will go out, and now I'm going to hang up this phone here, which will release three. There you go. Now, I have a very interesting trick I'm going to show you. I'm going to call 24, which also appears as line 4 on this phone. I'm going to call 24 from this phone, and I'm going to answer it from this phone, and I'm going to put it on hold. There we go. Okay, I'm on line 3, which is extension 23. I'm going to dial 24. It's ringing on this phone as its own line, and it's also ringing on here. So I'm going to answer it from this phone. The f I am now on line four with the six button set. I'm now going to put it on hold. I'm going to hang up the phone. Line four is on hold. Now I called line 24 from this phone, which is third line. That line's on hold, and now I'm going to answer it from this phone. So when I go off hook, it's going to give it's going to take it off hold, light it steady, indicating that the line is in use, and there you go. I'm going to hang up. Line four is now released, and I'm going to release line three. And one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this phone, I'm going to call 21. It's going to ring the other phone. Okay, go off hook on the 500 set. Dial tone, line four is indicating in use on the key system, including the 2565 over there. And now I'm going to call 21. Oh, you know, I didn't wait it too long. Let me do that again. I'm going to dial 21. Line one is ringing on all three multi line sets. And as you notice on the key system, the 551 KSU, I added some LED lights to indicate lines in use on the block. And there are little red LED lights on the cards themselves indicating the status of the line. So let me go off hook line one and I am now connected between this phone the 500 and line one of the 444 set let me hang them up and that's the 500 set with a lead control now we're going to slide over a little bit here with the camera and we're going to show you speakerphone well first of all let me go concentrate on the 
565 phone, the one in the middle. I'm going to show you that it has all four lines plus intercom. So I'm going to go off hook. We got line one, we got line two, we got line three, we got line four, and you got intercom, which is buzzer one. And you see it buzz. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go off hook, dial one, and it buzzes. I even, um, if you noticed, um, when I buzz the phone, you notice the whole light lights up in red when it buzzes. It's a little trick I've done in the field for customers that are in noisy environments that have multiple key sets. This goes back to the 80s when I was in the field working on this equipment professionally and there was um you have telemarketing rooms what we used to call boiler rooms and other rooms that had tables with multiple key sets all over them and it was very hard to distinguish which phone was buzzing when someone was trying to contact a specific person sitting at a desk so i came up with the solution of putting a 51a lamp in the hold button tying the leads to that, those two screw terminals that light up that bulb on the hold button to the buzzer, which is usually the yellow, yellow orange pair. So anytime the phone would buzz, it would light up the hold button. That way, the person knew in a noisy environment that it's their phone that was buzzing and they needed to take the call. Let me hang that up. Now I'm going to buzz. The, five, six, the 2565 set over there. That one's set up as zero. So I'm going to go off hook with this phone. I'm going to dial zero. And it buzzes. And you saw that I had that hold button light, uh, rigged up to light as well. And you can go off hook with the speakerphone, which I will show you. Line five. Whoop, feedback. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. We're on speakerphone. We'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, now I'm going to hang that up. And again, this has got four lines. You can put all four on hold. You can buzz it. And hang up. And you can retrieve the line from any of these phones. There you go. Now we're going to go to the 444 set in the middle there. Try to tilt this camera down a little bit. There we go. And this 444 set is the predecessor to the 500 series multi-line phones. They actually had a four button version of this phone called a 544 that came out to replace this phone in the mid 50s. These four, these 440 sets actually came out in the late 30s and they were used actually straight into the 60s in some places and whenever the set failed or had to be turned in it was retired and they replaced them with the uh, either four button or six button key sets. Um, in the 50s, they did have the, five, the four button versions of these called the 544s. I believe somewhere in the early 60s, they discontinued the four button version of this phone and strictly stuck with six buttons, saved on production costs and so forth. And they redid the key strip as well. They upgraded it. So they discontinued the four button version of these of this phone and just kept them as six button sets as a 564 or 565 set. Of course they came out with 10 and 20 and 30 button sets, but we'll not get into that. We're just working on the six button and four button sets here. So anyway, this phone is actually made to work on either 1A, 1A1 or 1A2. Well, 1A1 and 1A2 is pretty much the same thing. 1A is a totally different concept, and this phone being a later model phone that came out 
this specific model came out in I believe 57 it can be wired by just moving about three or four wires inside the phone converting it from 1A to 1A1 slash 1A2 or vice versa obviously I have it wired for 1A1 slash 1A2 key and basically it works just like that you can go on the phone press the line line lights up you can put it on hold hit hold ring you know flashes on hold release hang up now I'm gonna call that phone from this one and since it's only got three lines it's gonna have lines one through three only on it so I'm gonna go on line one and I'm gonna dial 20, 20, eh, 23 and it's gonna ring on the third line appearance and basically answer it there you go, got the line, you can put it on hold. It's holding. And go back and retrieve it. And then you can hang up. And I'll hang up this one. So that's basically a three line version of that phone, an older, but they work the same. And I'm going to go ahead and call an extension from this phone. So I'll keep it on line three. I'll dial 21. I'm going to answer 21 from here. Put it on hold. Hang this up. I'm going to press it here. Answer it. Release it. Done. Simple. All right, now we're going to go to the um, 2565 with 3A speakerphone. Now we have the transmitter, obviously the 2565 set here, and speaker. Now I noticed, yeah, they're close to each other, but this is just a demonstration. Normally these would be separated quite a distance from each other to avoid feedback. So I'm going to show you how this works. Obviously, this is a touch tone version of the 565. That's why they call it a 2565. It is obviously uh, wired together. Again, lines one through four squared with the other phones, the other multi line phones 21, 22, 23, 24, and intercom, which this one is zero. So I'm actually going to use a speakerphone. <laughs> So you can hear the dial tone from the Valcom unit. And I'm going to dial zero. And it buzzes. Now what's cool about the Valcom unit, that's the Valcom intercom unit, is that you can actually, after you've dialed an extension, you can buzz it again without having to hang up. All you have to do is hit the start button and make the phone buzz. Pretty cool, huh? It's like a signal button. And here's another feature on the Valcom unit. If I want to dial another extension on the intercom, let's say that 565 there on the left, and I don't want to lose the intercom path because if I hang up, someone else can grab that intercom line and use it. So right now I have control of the line. Let's say I am buzzed this phone I know I'm buzzing myself, but I'm buzzing the phone, no one answers. Okay, I'm going to try someone else, but I don't want to lose my intercom line. All I do is hit pound, I'm going to get dial tone back from the Valcom unit. Now I'm going to dial 1 for that phone. And I buzz that phone. And I hit star, it's going to buzz it again without having to redial it. Pretty cool, huh? I'm going to show you another feature on the Valcom unit that you probably might not have known. Um, I can make that phone buzz twice in concession just by dialing its intercom number. But this is how you do that. Normally you would either hang up or press pound for re to retrieve dial tone from the intercom unit. Now I'm going to make that phone buzz twice by dialing star 1. And watch what happens. It goes buzzes twice. Is that cool? I'm going to do it again. Star one. 
I'm going to buzz myself now, which is zero. So I'm going to get dial tone again by pressing pound, and I'm going to dial star zero to make my phone buzz twice. Pretty cool, huh? And of course, you can still manually buzz it as well after you've already dialed a number. And another feature, which is cool about this intercom unit, is that let's say... I'm on the intercom call with somebody and I want to add another party to the intercom line. Everyone stays online. While I'm online, I hit pound and I dial another party. They can go and say, oh, I'm being joined in the conversation. Without having to hang the phone up and redial the intercom number, I can add another party to the path and have multiple parties on the intercom without having to hang up and redial the number. You can do it simultaneously. What's, um, that feature um, obviously only works with touch-tone phones. Since you don't have a star pound on a rotary phone, you can't invoke those extra features the Valcom has. Um, on a dial phone, obviously, if you're going to dial a person and I'm going to dial that one, which is zero. And if I have to redial again that number, I'm going to have to hang up and get dial tone again because I don't have a pound button on it. Get dial tone again. And dial zero. And you, once you've dialed one number, you can't dial another number with the rotary dial phone because you don't have a pound button. All right. Now we're going to get into even fun stuff here. I'm going to go to this phone. Since it's a speakerphone, you can hear what's going on. Um, as you notice on the display, I have a Panasonic 308. It's providing dial tone for the four line cards in the 1A2. The extensions I'm using off the Panasonic for the key system are 21, 22, 23, and 24 which are the line buttons 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now I also have a trunk on the Panasonic on trunk port 1 which will allow me to call outside the system. Now the way it's set up here I can pick up any of those four lines 21 to 24 and this also applies to the 500 set at the end since it has its, its dedicated dedicated to 24 only I can dial 9 get dial tone and since we're running through my PBX that's running my house I have to dial 9 again to get an outside trunk out of my house so I can call a number so I'm gonna go ahead and call a number and you can hear it on a speakerphone now this is how a speakerphone works you press the line an idle line or if you're answering a call, you can answer it obviously with it as well. But I'm going to go ahead and now let's pick one. Line one, I'm going to go off hook. I'm going to dial nine. I'm going to get a second dial tone. I'm going to get a dial nine again to get a third dial tone. And now I'm going to dial time of day. afternoon and welcome to the new South Florida time and temperature. You're trusted and reliable up to the minute source for over 70 years. Proudly presented to you by New Rock Communications. 104 p.m. It is 82 degrees and mostly cloudy. Winds from the northeast at 9.2 miles per hour or 8 knots. That's it. When you hang up, you press off on the phone, on the speakerphone. Now, I'm going to call another time of day number. We've got two of them down here in South Florida. That was the first one. I'm going to call another one. I'll go off hook. By the way, if I want to take off speakerphone and go private on handset, all I do is lift. Speakerphone goes off. I'm now on handset only. If I want to switch back to speakerphone, this takes two hands. Hold the on button while I'm hanging up the phone. And it's back on speakerphone again. And of course, the dial tone uh, timeout timer kicked in on the Panasonic, so I got to hang up. 
it was waiting for me to dial out and after I think it gives you about 10 seconds to break dial tone otherwise it gives you the reorder tone you just heard anyway I'm gonna go back off hook I'm gonna dial another time of day number we have in Miami so I gotta dial 9 to get out a trunk on the Panasonic up there I gotta dial 9 again to get out of my system and I'm gonna dial the other time of day number Apologize for the advertisement, but that's how they get paid to provide the service, and I'll hang up. So that's pretty much it on my 1A2 demonstrator. I'm going to back up the camera a little bit, give you an overview of the whole system. And this is what I'll be bringing to the show in about three weeks in Orlando. And if you've been to the other previous year shows, you've probably seen this display. But it was a little bit different the previous times because I've made some changes, which you're going you're seeing right now. Uh, I have added the Panasonic KSU and the Valcom unit on the backboard. Before those were there, there were ringers on that board, so I used to have bells and the KSU and controller all on the same board. Well, this year I've done some enhancements. I've removed the ringers from the backboard, added the Panasonic KSU and the Valcom unit in place of it, so I keeps the key system equipment on its own backboard. It also cleans up the wiring mess I had in the back. Now, I'm going to move the camera to my right, and you'll see that I built a whole new backboard for the bells. So... In fact, we can go ahead and show you how these all work. I'm going to set the camera up. Let me lock it in. Where's the adjustment for it? Hold on a second. I'm going to try to center it and make it look nice. There we go. It keeps swiveling down. Let me uh, lock it in. Temperamental little thing is. Let me pause this for a second. I'll be right back. Hello. That was my key system display that you had previously seen. Now we're going to see my demonstrator display of various types of ringers that were used externally or internally inside telephone sets. As you can see on the backboard I have eight ringers of various types. This is just a small example of the various types of ringers that are out there or were out there in the field in various environments and stations. As you can see, there are eight ringers. There's a row on the top. You have three across. That bell is number one, the black one. Then the gold one is number two. The gray one is number three. Second row, you have three ringers. And that one there is number four, five, six, and down at the bottom you have two, which is seven and eight. So you have eight ringers here. As you can see here, I have them wired to an eight button key. 
each button numerically from 1 through 8 will ring each one of those ringers. Now eventually I'm going to have stickers, numeric stickers, that will indicate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But in the meantime, that's how they're set up right now, 1 through 8, left from right, top and bottom. So we'll start with number 1. That is a Western Electric 592A external ringer. It's a very loud bell, commonly used in warehouses, outdoor environments, areas which are very noisy inside like mechanic garages, gas stations, what have you, warehouses, construction sites, and they are used so that you can hear the phone ring and you go to the phone set and answer the call. That way you know you have a call coming in. These can be wired as an, a line ringer, being that it can be hooked directly to a line. It can also be used as a common audible ringer on a key system and also behind a PBX as a call pickup group as well. To hear what it sounds like, I'm going to press number one on the button. Now it's going to be very loud and you'll know, and you'll know why they use these outside and in noisy environments. Here we go. Loud bell, huh? That is your West Electric 592A external ringer. The next one to the right of it, which is bell number two in the gold housing, is a Western Electric 51A external ringer, loud bell slash chime. It has three different settings. On the bottom, you'll see the position left is chime. Position center is loud. When the switch is right here, it's right now set the left to chime. You move it to center for loud. It will become a loud bell, just like that one. And then you got low setting. If you move it to the right, it kills one of the gongs and makes it a little bit lower sound, you know, not as loud as with the two gongs. So you got low, you got loud, and you got chime. Right now I'm going to leave it on chime. Since it's bell number two, I got to press number two on the key. And this is what chime sounds like on bell number two. That's the chime setting. Now I'm going to switch it to loud. And it's going to sound loud, just like that one. Here we go. Pretty darn loud, huh? <laughs> And now we're going to set it to low, and this is what it's going to sound like on low. It's actually going to be like one out of the two gongs ringing. So here we go, number two in the low setting. And that's the low setting for this ringer. I'm going to switch it back to loud. It's in the loud position. Here we go. And now we're going to switch it to chime position on the left. And of course here is the chime. As you can tell, that ringer can be used in an office setting with the chime mode. It can be used like the first bell in an outdoor environment or in a noisy environment or an area that you need to hear the bell ring. 
and in, you set it to the loud position or if it's a little too loud you can switch it to low so this bell's got in you can use it indoors outdoors office settings for chime warehouse garage settings for loud and so forth again it can be used as a line ringer on an outside line it can be used as a common audible ringer for a key system and or a common ringing device on a PBX now the ringer on the right top right is not made by Western Electric it's actually made by wheel lock wheel lock made these ringers for bell or for the bell system this is a wheel lock chime it's a single tone chime not a dual tone like this one this one sounds more like a doorbell this one does doesn't go ding dong you'll hear what this sounds like in fact back in the 50s 60s and 70s if you were at a department store you might have heard this sound here we go And that's the wheel lock chime right there on the right. Obviously used in indoor settings where they don't want to hear a loud telephone bell ringing in an office, department stores, malls, so forth. So that's your wheel lock chime, bell number three. Now bell number four on the center left is a Western Electric B1A ringer. This ringer is commonly used in 300 and 400 series phones just like the 444 key set you just saw previously in the 1A2 demonstrator video clip. Those phones is what you would find that type of ringer. Or actually that type of ring you'll find in those type of phones. 302 series phones, 400 series phones, subsets, you'll find them in a subscriber set primarily. Now, I'm sure they're used in other environments and other settings, but those are the main primarily used in those type of phones. And I'm going to go ahead and ring that one and you'll recognize that one, especially if you have a 302, key, uh, 302 phone in your collection. And there you go, bell number four, Western Electric B1A, internal ringer, commonly found in 300-400 series stations. Bell number five in the middle is a C4A internal ringer, commonly found or primarily found in 500 series phones like the key set you just saw, the 2565, the 565, and, and the 500 set next to it in my previous video. That's the type of ringer you'll find also in the 500 series wall phones. They're also found in 1500 series and 2500 series desk phones and key sets. And so I will ring number five, and of course that will be very familiar to you. And there you have bell number five, C4A. Bell number six to the right of it, this gray rectangular box, is an external ringer. It's in a Western Electric E1C. 
It is commonly used as an inline ringer for early model princess phones, model number 701 princess phones. The first versions of princess phones did not have a ringer inside of them, so they had to install an external ringer, and commonly those were the type of ringers they used. These were also used as a, your basic inline ringer that you may have in an office or home, whether you didn't have a phone in that room that this ringer's installed, or you had a second line and wanted to differentiate between the line one and line two. Line one probably ringing in the bell of the phone, and this would be used for line two. It can also be used as common audible on a key or PBX system. And that one sounds like this. And that's bell number six, Western Electric E1C external ringer. Now on the bottom left is bell number seven. That's an M1A internal bell. That type of bell or ringer was commonly used in later model princess phones when they were able to develop that ringer specifically. Actually at that time they developed that little, little ringer to be used inside a princess phone. So they started putting those in the 702 series princess phones. They also used them in early model 1554s and 2554 wall sets and also in various other applications. But they were primarily used in later model princess phones, the 702 series princess phones and 1554, 1550 style wall phones, 2550 style wall phones. And that one sounds like this. And there you have the M1A Western Electric internal ringer. The one to the last but not least, number eight down at the bottom center, is a Western Electric P1A internal ringer. That ringer was developed and to be used inside trim line telephone sets the 220 series, the 2220 series, in the bases of those trim line sets, whether it being a wall or a desk base, that's the type of ringer you will find in those trim line stations. Later on, they also started retrofitting and using the P1A as a replacement of the M1A and started installing P1As or manufacturing P1As to be used inside very late model princess phones, usually the 2702 series, and also, and there are some 702 series princess phones, late model ones, they came out like probably in the early 80s before the breakup, they were starting to use those in princess phones, they also started using them in 2554 uh, wall sets. Uh, touch tone wall phones. They started installing those in place of the M1A and you will be familiar with this sound of the P1A right now. Also, I noticed the P1A has been used in the designer line series phones that came out in the 70s and through the 80s. That's usually the type of ring you'll find in those as well. So there you have it. You have number one, the 592A. Number two, the F1A chime. Number three, the wheel lock chime. 
Number four, B1A internal ringer. Number five, C4A internal ringer. Number five, E1C external ringer. Number seven, M1A internal ringer. And number eight, the P1A. And there you have it, the Bell display. <laughs> and there you have it, my 1A2 key slash PBX display on the left with stations and on the right is the ringer display. These will be at the Orlando Castleberry Show this year, this month, January of 23. These are also shown at other shows as well, but it will be at the Orlando show in about three weeks. Hope you enjoyed this video, and Happy New Year.